Well, good morning, everybody. This is Jeremy Williams representing Garden City Ammonia Program, and uh, today I'm going to kick off another R717 tip of the day. Uh, it is April 9th, the day after Passover. Tomorrow's Good Friday. Um, living in some good times, got some great news. Uh, some of you and most of you may be aware that you know a lot of our staff was uh, temporarily laid off. Uh, they'll be coming back on the 13th of this month full time and we're kicking it hard, kicking it strong. And for all of you out there that are doing what you can to survive with your families, we pray for you, we're with you. And um, let me get into a little bit of education for you. So let's say hypothetically uh, we have a refrigeration system, which we all do, and uh, we're trying to take heat out of an area, or location, product, or place. Uh, second law of thermodynamics is the measurement of differential, which means hot essentially is going to go to cold. The greater the temperature difference, the greater the heat may flow. Um, if we were to uh, try to refrigerate an area or space that maybe your product may be within, um, we could have some problems if things aren't set correctly. So let's say this is our cooler, and uh, we're trying to keep that room roughly around 20 degrees. And uh, doing that, we have to have a unique pressure. And to be able to do that, we can go look at a unique saturation chart. And if I want the room to be 20 degrees, looking at a couple things here, this is all the negative side of the chart. Come over here, we'll go to the positive side of the chart. Roughly about 33 pounds of gauge pressure will do that for us. Um, but that's just a 20 degree medium. And if the room's going to be 20, the ammonia is probably going to have to be about 10 degrees colder than that rule of thumb. So if we come over here and look up 10 degrees on the left-hand column, we would need a pressure roughly of 23, 24 pounds of ammonia pressure. So doing that, um, 24 pounds of pressure, we would most likely have a saturation temperature of 10 degrees. The room could be managed roughly around 20 degrees. Uh, a big problem that we have in the industries is they'll put thermostats in these rooms and coolers. And having that thermostat in that room or cooler set at a temperature that is not even achievable by our saturation temperature essentially means the solenoids that are feeding those systems are never going to close. And even though we may meet satisfied pressures at our compressors and we think that we have satisfied the load, the thermostats will never call off. And when the thermostats don't call off, what we find is, is when the compressors unload or shut off, solenoids stay activated and they flood out the units. Flooding out the units can cause a mismanagement of imbalance of your liquid delivery and storage systems. But nevertheless, that gets a thought process happening. I uh, hope every one of you kind of think about it. Post maybe some comments, some thoughts, and some other things that you've seen happen in the industry or your experience with thermostats set at unachievable temperatures. Uh, we had a lot happen yesterday, and I uh, want to just kind of give you a, a showing of what's happening to System A, and then at the end of this, we'll have an opportunity to win a sweet GCAT hat. So this machine right here is the new high-stage compressor for System A. It's 75 horsepower, big, big machine, oversized oil separator for better oil separation, slide valve and slide stop. Uh, you can see on the wall over there are RAM starters slash VFDs. Uh, the one on the right will be working for this high stage machine. Uh, we'll be adding an additional USBI oil filtration system on it. So for you guys at USBI, Ben, Rick, Victor, uh, many things are happening here. A concrete pad will be poured here and this oil pot will be connecting to the bottom of the intercooler. Walking over this direction, this is the booster compressor we set yesterday morning. And uh, again, it's almost an identical twin to the high stage machine, but this one's designed to suck at 10 inches of mercury and discharge at 33 pounds of pressure. Uh, oversized oil separator, thermal siphon oil cooling. Uh, it'll also be getting uh, USPI oil filtration. And then this oil pot on its pads actually gonna be connected up to the thermal siphon tank up here to take out the oil before it goes to the compressors. And um, we've got 14 sight glasses going to be added to the system. All very cool places. Accumulators starting to be plumbed in. All the ammonia is evacuated. And uh, we're going to go 100 mile an hour trying to put this baby back together. Uh, we got a class starting on Monday. we got a few coming in. And uh, going to be rocking strong with those guys. Online trainings 
been a success. I've uh, been asked a lot to develop uh, a lot of unique special classes and courses for different companies. So we're going to make that happen. And uh, so this is what we need, or not what we need. This is your chance. You want to win a GCAP hat. Uh, this is what I need. I need you to like this post. I need you to comment another Ammonia Tech's name on this post. And let's get this post shared. And um, I hope everybody has a safe day. Until we meet again, keep it in the pipes.